San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Sumo Logic Illuminate 2018. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We are wrapping up a full day of coverage here at Sumo Logic Illuminate um, at the Hyatt at San Francisco Airport. It's been a great day. 600 people here. And we're excited to wrap our day with the founder, the co-founder uh, of Sumo Logic, Christian Beaton, co-founder and... No, CTO, actually. And CTO, yeah. very good. So, yeah. Christian, love to get your perspective on this event. I think this is the second year you've had the event. It's grown a lot since last year. Kind of your perspective as you walk around and look at all these people that are completely engaged in something you started years I, it's, ago. Uh, yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's humiliating in, on, in, in many ways and humbling, I guess, is the word that I'm looking for. Uh, I'm very, I mean, these are, look, we are doing this. We are, we, are, we are building software, and that's always how I've looked at it. We're building software, a service now, uh, in order for, you, for people to use it, right? And we're not necessarily building it for ourselves, even though in Sumo case, you know, we actually use it ourselves as well, which is also very cool. But ultimately, what you know, we create so people can actually, you know, uh, we, we, we create things so that to, to make people's lives easier. And uh, nothing really kind of tells that story like, like coming out to a, to a user conference. And right. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that we are doing these. We, we kind of did it for the first time last year and uh, it was it was a resounding success. I think we by and large doubled, you know, this year and uh, customers coming back from last year, you know, start, you know, recognizing some folks that I hadn't met before, uh, you know, on the road, et cetera, they're coming back here, that's a, that's a good story and, uh, you know, more folks and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's humbling. Yeah, it's great. Very so exciting. talk about yeah. when you when you got started, because you've been around, you were software engineer at a bunch of companies before you started Sumo. So what opportunity did you see, right? It's it's a it's a leap of faith to start a company, but luckily we're here. A lot of, it yeah. happens a lot. What what was the opportunity that you saw? Was it was it fixing a problem that, that you had, which yeah. is often the best way, or did you see some something new on the horizon that you wanted to jump on? Yeah, you know, as much as I would like to see that, say that I, I I saw something on the horizon that I wanted to jump on, and you know, they partially partially I think we did, but it, it's really more about you know trying to fix something that we felt was broken. Uh, you know, I was uh, I was uh, at Arcside, so I was my co-founder for a long time. Arcside was a fantastic company. We built a, it's a very nerdy thing. It's called a security information event management system, but it's basically a system that allows folks to, uh, you know, bring in security data from all these different places uh, and all these different devices, and then actually, you know, manage detection and, and you know incident response around it. And that that was a great story. Arcside went public. I was an early engineer there, so that's what that's basically best case scenario, right? Right. right. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy, and I'm very thankful. You know, all the way back to the folks that hired me there and made that company successful. So what we did observe, however, was, uh, and an accent to be, and that, that needs to be said, was sort of a classic enterprise software product where you know, we would be sitting there in the office, we would write the code, and then we would compile it, and we put it on a CD, and we send it to customers. And then, you know how this works, you know, then it maybe doesn't work properly. Uh, and, and then we had to sort of, you know, somehow try to sort of, you know, Debug by telepathy, and I don't know if you can do it, but like I will, uh, you know, I will like publicly admit that I can't. So it, it just felt like it was it was a very inefficient way of doing things. We felt customers were struggling way too much with um, the sort of deployment, installation, upgrading, and, and uh, all this of, of the software, all the things that didn't really have to, anything to do. They were just prerequisites to actually use it. Right. right. Um, we observed that uh, a lot of enterprise software categories got disrupted. Uh, you know, from 2000 forward, you know, with 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 SaaS players like Salesforce, and then you know we we we, we used so we had integrations with Remedy at some point, and then service now came around and pretty much obsoleted them, right? And, right, right. And so you know we knew we, we kind of we were aware of those stories, you know, even back in the Oxide days. Um, and uh, you know, at one point in in, in 2008, uh, we actually went to see Werner Vogels, who I'm sure you know, who is yes. the uh, you know the, the the CTO of of Amazon and, and obviously of AWS as well, and do one of his like patented you know he's a fantastic speaker you know one of his patented talks where where he basically ran like you know a group of folks it was in Stanford actually uh, you know through the advantages of AWS and this was in 2008 right they were like I think AWS was maybe 2000 uh, I think they started in 2006 or so right. It, they had like S3. Or either shows or anything, Yeah, they, they right? didn't, exactly. There was, there was no reInvent or anything like that. And uh, I remember that we went there and, and we had heard about it, but we didn't really know. 
it sounded weird and but interesting so we went and then we walked out of there and we were like holy shit this is you know this is just i mean you can't roll back time right 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 um and 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 this is just a completely different model and and what he really what he brought across well or what what we received was that hey now as a you know as a as a software developer you know you can actually build services without having to know all this gnarly data center stuff and not that that's not interesting but you just can't know everything right right, right. um because what they are what they are what i feel like they really did is to turn a data center into an API. Right, it's one of my favorite. And my great, that was a great line, like uh, reinvent 2013. Yeah, exactly. And 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 so you know, that appeals to me, right? And and so, what happened after that was this sort of idea that hey, you know, there's this this thing that is suddenly possible that that we could use without having to first hire half of Google, right? Right. Uh, or, uh, because you know we don't have to worry about this aspect anymore, uh, and maybe that gives us a chance to sort of you know do some things differently than we than than, than they were done before in our in our limited sort of in our domain basically right. And I remember those parking lot discussions. It literally happened right after that talk, and uh, so that sort of started the uh, sort of that started the idea right? right. And so there was a little bit of you know buying into this vision, and that's kind of the yeah we certainly bought into that vision big time because it was obvious to us that this was going to win, uh, and then also just trying to apply that to what we knew uh, and that ultimately led to the led to the um, you know founding of sumo in in 2010 so what was the first application your first go to market application um, you know we we have one we have basically one product it's a it's a platform on top of which you can do monitoring troubleshooting you know security analytics uh, business analytics to some degree um, and uh, so there's there's always been just Sumo, right? But the Sumo platform started with a, with a strong focus in in in, uh, in in 2012, with a strong initial focus on basically application monitoring and troubleshooting, right? right? Okay. So it was not actually initially a security focused product. Which is funny because you came from security, the yes. immediate uh, preceding <laughs> yeah. company. Every uh, you know, every, all of the early sales guys, you know, they they looked at all of our LinkedIn's, and it wasn't just me; it was my co-founder, and of, of course, a lot of the original crew, right? And they just went straight out and tried to sell security, but that's not what we had at the time. So, so we had some very interesting discussions. I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not talking out of turn there. Um, but you know we have a passion for security as well, and you know it's not that we didn't want to do it. It's just that in the beginning you have to focus, right, and you have right. to look at what is the thing that you can build first. You know, obviously you have this like vision in your head of how you lay out all the things, and it was clear that we're going to get there eventually, but not in the beginning. Right. right. Well, so I'm sure you know Fred Letty. We've interviewed him a ton of times at ServiceNow. Yep. He mentioned ServiceNow. He's a fantastic guy. Really, he's very, very good guy. guy. Yeah, I know him a little bit. And, yeah. and and you know he's he talks and we talk about it a lot. You know, nobody has a line item on a budget uh, for Q4 to buy a new platform. So even if you want to yep. build a new platform, you can't go to market out of the gate at a platform. You got to have some app yeah. that somebody does have yeah. a line item yeah. and some budget to buy. So yeah. that. Uh, that, but but if you plan it right and you and you put the right foundation, then that gives you that opportunity to, to expand into lots of different applications. It looks like you yep. guys are doing a lot of that now as, as yep. kind of the roles and, and the people that are using the tool is growing inside of the company. Absolutely, and um, you know we're doing this to some degree because we always wanted to do it. Uh, the other the other part of it, and this is especially interesting when it comes to security, is even though the original go to market wasn't focused on security. Um, uh, you know, p you know, people would 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 bring us in and then start using us for security for you know log management and those types of things, for sort of the you know information you know management use cases in a like you know classic way of saying this. But um, so they they almost tracked us there, right? And it's not that we didn't want to go there. It was just like, man, you know, we got to focus on something. You know, right, we can't right. do like five million things at the same time. But it was very clear that you know what the you know I'm gonna you know, that's gonna sound very grand, but like. It was very clear that what the market wanted, you know, as it was like, you know, was, you know, a security solution that is cloud focused, right? Right, right. In the cloud and for the cloud. And uh, that's, you know, we've been like patiently working on that. Uh, I think, you know, we have we have established ourselves as the sort of leading monitoring and, and you know, troubleshooting platform. You know, vendor, we we're being used in a lot of companies, you know, old school companies. We have lots of on-prem workloads, you know, companies that are doing cloud transformation. We have obviously lots of cloud, uh, uh, you know, workloads. And then, you know, of course, you know, all of the all of the new guys who are just 100% in the cloud. And, you know, I, I talk to customers here. It's not even, they're not even thinking about it twice. You right. know, they would not go with an on-prem vendor, right? right? So, so we, we hear all the time about the benefits of, of cloud, obviously, from the business point of view. But from your point of view, from a founder, from, you know, building a company to piggyback 
on this trend and, yeah. and to see the speed of, of adoption and innovation and yeah. Docker and Kubernetes and, and you know, it just rocks and rolled. Yeah. Maybe you could speak a little bit to you know, kind of making that platform decision and how different is it for you as the founder of a software company to build a cloud native software company versus a traditional company that you did before. Yeah, so, so we did it because we thought it wasn't going to just be better but also easier. <laughs> Remember the telepathy thing, right? Yes, yeah. We couldn't figure that one out, <laughs> so we figured, you know, if we just run the damn thing ourselves, uh, it'll be easier. It turns out that we were probably a little bit wide-eyed about that, um, you know, running running a large, like running a platform as a service on a very large scale, and our scale level from the beginning was, was reasonably large, and now it's very large. Uh, brings with it a new set of problems um, because now you know we you know we want to have the responsibility for keeping it up right you know it's a dial tone type situation you, you right. pick up the phone there's a dial tone this is how we look at it right and in terms of what Sumo needs to provide in terms of availability and all these things and so that's hard um, the reality is that I would do it again because I think it's still better than the old world because at least right now we have control over the environment which we didn't have before so now you know a build Sumo is multi, fully multi-tenant so that is a fully multi fully multi-tenant you know data management platform that's a that's a fairly tall out tall order from an engineering perspective. I think we did pretty well, but oh man, we learned a lot about operating <laughs> things, trust me. So, you know, but I do think that it's fundamentally better and, you know, there's always some pain, right? And, you know, I, that pain, I'm actually, you know, this pain that we have today, it feels like a pain that is like, that makes more sense and is more easily manageable than the sort of the way that it was before anyways. Right. And, and the other thing, and this is where it gets kind of, you know, goes full circle is that, what we go through is exactly what our customers are going through as well, right? Because they now all, pretty much everybody, every new project at this point becomes a web app of some sort. You know, they, you know, their users are going to expect them to have sort of dial tone type properties, right? Right. right. And um, so, so we are very much, you know, you know, we are very much the same as our customers that way, right? We 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 probably started a couple of years earlier uh, because you know we just. We just did, right? And and, and so we probably, in, in, in some cases, know a little bit more. We just have a little bit more kind of muscle memory on these types of things. Um, but, uh, and it, I think that gives us to some degree the right to serve them. But, uh, you know, we are, with all these things, when, I, when we have customers visit the office, right? They are technical guys, engineers, ops, et cetera. They sit in a room and you wouldn't be able to tell that they're not from Sumo. You know, when we bring our you know technical and product folks to a customer for uh, you know a session of some sort, you know they wouldn't be able to tell that uh, you know that those guys are from Sumo and not from their own company right. because we all look the same. We all like you know have the same mannerisms and it's the same basic crowd, right? right? <laughs> and uh, so so we're very much like our customers, and I think we can empathize tremendously, and and I think that's important, and and that 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 fuels a lot of what we're doing. Right. So last question, you've been at this for a while. As you look forward, what are some of your priorities? What are some of the things that, that you're keeping an eye on as, as, uh, as you move out of 2018 and beyond? Uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I, 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 I do like to look forward. Um, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this whole serverless business, which, you know, it seems to gain so much momentum and it's such a sort of, you know, crazy, you know, uh, uh, you know out of left field type of idea uh, that, 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 but, People are just clinging to it, and it, it, it hit a nerve, right? And right. Uh, but it feels like the natural, you know, kind of end state of this constantly shrinking of the unit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Of the basically footprint. the yes. virtual unit, right? Yes. To, no, to no unit. No, this is why I think it's really super interesting, and I think that's probably also why so many people, like you know, you know, jumped onto it, even though it was you know really wild, right? And again, Amazon brought this out even before they had support for Docker, right? Imagine that. And then they backtracked and built a container service, and it was like, what are you guys doing? You already had the future invented. So, so that's something <laughs> that I'm trying to wrap my head around. Right. right, and uh, the other thing is always, of course, about um, you know trying to do what we are doing today better. Uh, you know, going all the way to the layers of the architecture, trying to figure out what have we actually learned because we did learn a bunch of stuff, you know, a lot of stuff actually. <laughs> um, uh, and you know, how can we continue to sort of make our system you know perform better? And also, how can we bring down? Uh, how how can we kind of look at the economics of the whole thing? You know, data keeps growing, right? right. And uh, ultimately, processing data costs money. Uh, customers have as much data as they have. It depends on what kind of business they have. But they'll right? have a lot more tomorrow. And that that they you can will have count a lot, on. Absolutely, and 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 so you know some very fundamental kind of platform level things are are sort of you know we're, we're discussing on some level as 
as I'm sure everybody else is in the market as well. But those are the things that, I, um, that I'm looking at right now. Great. Well, thank you uh, for taking a few minutes of your day and congratulations on your success. It's got to be super fulfilling to, to walk around and see all these people. I'm very excited. You know, jumping yeah. on what you started years and years ago. Absolutely. Thanks all for right. having me. Thank you. He's Christian. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Sumo Logic Illuminate. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.